Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So today we'll be looking at the Republic's LAT gunship, evaluating the performance of the vehicle, its features, and comparing it to other dropships of the Clone Wars and beyond. Before we begin though, just a quick sponsored segment, well, sort of. Today's the day a lot of you have been waiting for. Masaman Curry, my Vite Ramen flavor, has finally been restocked. For those who don't know, I've run a partnership with a ramen company called Vite Ramen for several years now they've really helped the channel along particularly in some tougher moments well a couple of years ago they asked me if i wanted to develop my own flavor and after a lot of testing we created masamon curry it's an incredibly unique flavor and one that's just been overwhelmingly popular when it comes in it's sold out almost instantly anyway highly recommend it i personally am so proud of the product you can find a link to order masamon curry or anything else through vite ramen down in the description i've also heard they'll be including some special stickers for the first week or so, and you can use code Eckhart's for 10% off, which is pretty cool. All right, let's talk the LAT, the Low Altitude Assault Transport. This was a dropship used primarily by the Republic during the Clone Wars, but also by other factions, especially the Empire afterwards. The interesting thing about the LAT is that there are actually several variants. We'll be talking about all of them in today's video. The most common LAT variant was the LAT I, with the I standing for infantry. However, most versions of the vehicle share several common features, primarily the fact that it operates not only as a transport but also as a gunship. As explained by the Attack of the Clones Visual Dictionary, the LAT is armed with, and I quote, massive twin missile launchers allowing concerted over horizon strikes on slower fixed targets, two pairs of widely rotating blaster cannons which defend the gunship with bolts of deadly precision, finally three chin and tail mounted laser cannons which can swivel and depress to devastate enemy infantry and other light ground assets. It's not shocking that the LAT was so heavily armed given that it was designed to drop troops in hot locations. We see this at the Battle of Geonosis, but it would be a common strategy during Republic offensives. Acclimator class transports carried a complement of LAT gunships which would deliver troops in waves of 2,000 each, with again the ship's weaponry ensuring that not only would troops get to the surface, but that the Republic could also soften up the enemy in the area. LAT infantry variants could deploy a up to 30 passengers, but as mentioned, different models of the gunship could also be used to deploy vehicles or other assets. Before I move on though, I do want to focus on the weapons for one second. Everyone points out that the LAT is super heavily armed, but one thing I don't always see discussed is the diversity of the armaments. Not only does the LAT have anti-air, anti-ground, and anti-personnel weaponry, but there are so many different types of weaponry being used. Something like the beam cannons on the LAT are great at hitting targets in the LAT's field of view, whereas the missiles can go over the horizon, around obstacles, with the pair of mass drivers also being capable of firing a variety of munition types. There is also the sliding doors allowing troopers within the LAT to fire at targets with their personal weapons, although that may not always be advisable. Moving on from weapons to armor, the LAT was not a tremendously sturdy vehicle. The new essential guide to vehicles and vessels says the LAT's armored hull is meant to absorb a great deal of punishment but I just don't agree. Even with its shield, you don't often see a LAT take too many hits. Rather, the dropship seems to rely on its incredible ordnance, its field of fire, and also its speed, rather than its armor or shielding to shrug off attacks. Despite its somewhat bulky frame and all the weapons on the thing, the LAT actually had really great speed and maneuverability, which made it perfect for areas like Geonosis, which provided lots of natural protection. But I mean, that's also kind of the great thing about the LAT, it's heavily customizable, and the Essential Guide to Warfare notes that alongside heavy-duty vehicle carriers, there were also anti-armor gunship, top-secret special force transports, and more. The Republic, interestingly enough, also had another heavily armored ship, which it could use if defense rather than speed was necessary, and I'm talking about the Acclimator. The Acclimator was rare in that it was a capital ship optimized for surface landing, so I guess it makes sense that you complement that with a fast-moving, quick unload dropship. Additionally, the LAT was equipped with top-of-the-line survival, sensory, and electronic systems. The ship was also designed to survive hard landings, and the cross-section's visual dictionary actually has a great point. The LAT is so advanced because individual clone troopers are so valuable. They're so expensive. One clone is worth however many battle droids, so the thing that's taking them into battle needs to be robust, and it needs to be extremely high quality. The new Essential Guide to Vehicles and Vessels 
Brussels also points out that the Republic is successful in a large part due to its diverse array of military vehicles, which can only reach the battlefield through landers like the LAT. In other situations, we see that the LAT's secondary features as a reconnaissance, search and rescue, or assault vessel make it absolutely critical to the success of the Republic. One perhaps strange feature of the LAT is how it operates in relation to space. The LAT can perform a landing from a space-borne vessel, however, it's not able to return to space. When I talk about the LAT dropping off waves of troops, well, the acclimator is going to have to be in atmosphere. I'll read a quote from the Essential Guide to Warfare, which explains why. At the center of the ship, where the wings meet the hull, sits an advanced repulsor drive coupled with two robust turbofan engines, capable of achieving speeds of Mach 0.5. Light shielding and detachable external drive tubes enable the LAT to orbit drop from a spaceship, although sustained friction interaction reduces the effectiveness of the deflector in atmosphere to essentially nil, and the standard LAT is unable to return to orbit from a surface launch. Now, we do see LAT variants made to operate in space. They usually, however, are lacking features like the sliding troop transport door. And honestly, I think the LAT does pretty much everything it sets out to do extremely well. I also really do like, however, the CIS's most common dropship, the HMP, but they have the benefit of being able to deploy droids, so there's not the same concerns about space that obviously an army of, well, living beings needs to consider itself with. The Empire had a successor to the LAT known as the IDT. It was smaller than the LAT, with less diverse weapons, and I think that's probably a practical consideration, considering the fact that the Empire wasn't really actively dropping in combat zones or fighting offensives. And that's why you see something like the Imperial Sentinel being completely set up differently. Yeah, it carries a lot of troops and even vehicles, but it doesn't need the speed or even the pure firepower of the LAT, because the Empire is not usually dropping on contested worlds. Instead, it focuses on survivability and shielding. So, is it better than the LAT? I mean, at certain things, but I think the LAT is pretty much perfectly designed for its role. It's deadly, it's versatile, it's configurable, you could draw cool designs on it. What more do you want? I think the LAT was the perfect dropship for the Republic. That, however, is just my opinion. Make sure you let me know yours down below, and again, if you want to get on the new Vite Ramen drop, link down in the description. See you again soon, guys. May the Force be with you.